I have had the honor of working with Roots TV for over a year now, and it has been one of the most important things that have happened in my life. I'm Riz, I play the part of Moe, the, uh, the villain in this short film. Um, it seems fitting, seeing as that my past sort of was the same outlay, I played a villain in real life. Um, it's really good to put back in and pay it forward by going the right way about it and doing it on screen for these younger fellas. And in the movie I'm playing, their character, Adam, it's kind of the main character, but yeah, like, and Adam is kind of fighting two things, staying in the streets and starting out music. Yeah, and trying to like help out his mom. Roots TV reaches out to entertain and educate so many people in the community from so many different backgrounds and walks of life. Every month there are new and unique programs at Roots TV that reach out to people from different religious groups, cultural groups and backgrounds to support them, involve them and give them a taste of what it's like to be a filmmaker and a storyteller. Roots TV brings in young people and helps them teach the skills of filmmaking and storytelling. Teaches them how people's stories, their history, their culture, their background, what made them who they are, is not only brilliant for storytelling, but it can also teach us so many valuable lessons for future generations. Uh, it's been such an amazing journey, being part of uh, Roots TV. I've come such a long way, like, I remember when I first uh, met Elmi and Aisha and the rest of the guys from Roots TV. I was down in the dumps, I was like really stressed out, I had a lot of stuff going on. I was losing my ways, I was smoking weed, I was doing a lot of like stupid stuff. I got the help from Roots TV and you know like just, just the support from my family as well, like they helped me through so much, discovering my talents and my gifts as a stand-up comedian. I was able to be a core part of so many of these programs, and the effect that Roots TV has had on young people is undeniably special. Uh, and I was just helped by the Roots TV team at the Malaga Youth Centre, and they really helped me out, you know, completing this work. I recently just finished year 12, and I feel like people, young people like us would really benefit from something like this, you know? It's a free service, they help you complete your work, they help you get your resume done, they help you get your cover letter done, you know? So right now, we're at Malaga Supermarkets and um, we just spotted the, uh, other, the, team, yeah, the yeah. other team. Um, yeah, we're just going to give them the stank eye. You know? Seeing young people engage in filmmaking and storytelling and becoming passionate about what they can create is so, so special. Especially when some of these kids come from disadvantaged communities and difficult upbringing. My name is Chanik and I'm from Baga Senior School and I'm here working with Root TV. The first time I came to Root TV it was amazing, like the, the place is just full of friendly people, like in our space to chill. Roots TV not only enables these children to learn a new skill, but it also gives them hope and a pathway into a career in filmmaking, a career in media, or even a career in entertainment. The opportunities that these kids are given at the Roots TV Centre is incredibly unique especially when a lot of them wouldn't get this opportunity anywhere else. Since Roots TV moved to its new premises, it's been able to expand and grow these programs to reach more young people and cover so many different areas. Hi, my name is Tracy Cook and I'd just like to say a really big heartfelt thank you to Roots TV. They've been helping me film and record my podcast series and the amount of um, generosity and the amount of giving and the amount of professionalism that Roots TV actually delivers to the community. The work they do in the community is absolutely invaluable and I'd really like to take this time to say Starting thank you. A new Roots. life in Australia can often be tough for migrants, especially young people who arrive at a formative age. But a program in Perth's northern suburbs is using the arts and media to help young people from multicultural backgrounds overcome the challenges of being caught between two cultures. Performing can often be a daunting experience, but for Molly Nadunga, it's liberating. It's my comfort space, my space of freedom. It's my space to voice my opinions, my ideas. 
Born in Uganda, Molly migrated to Western Australia when she was 17, joining relatives in Perth. Hold on. It's been a difficult adjustment at times, embracing a new life full of opportunities while still respecting her culture, which often dictates a young person's future is decided by the elders. I see kids with vision and dreams. They want to start a business. They want to do things in the creative industry. And then the parents have this idea of how the future should look like. We're going to come in and make a circle. Being caught between two cultures is a reality for many young migrants. It's one of the issues that non-for-profit group Roots TV is tackling. We're here for the same reasons, I hope, and so there's no judgment in this room. And just to, to give it a shot. Roots TV provides a safe space for young people to express themselves in digital media, film and performing arts. The group recently teamed up with WA's Academy of Performing Arts in a pilot program which showcased the talent in Perth's multicultural community. For Molly Nadunga, the performing arts is likely to remain a hobby rather than a career, but the program has had a lasting impact. Oftentimes, growing up from my culture, we attach identity to our culture, thinking that that's who, you, who we are, but identity is like, you can be anyone. Roots TV hopes it will receive the funding it needs to continue its program with WAPA. Herlin Call. Say thank you, Roots TV. Stories from people who live around us, who may be different from us. And that is so, so important. Roots TV needs your support to keep running. That's why I really urge you to consider donating. Thank you. To be honest, uh, when I came in as a coach from the get-go, uh, from the start, you know, uh, we had a lot of, uh, you know, you know, we, we had short, short time to prep, you know, to get the players to sort of focus and try to work on the game. And, you know, you know the, the way I want the players to play, the, the, the structure of the team and, and our style of play. It took us quite, it, we had like two weeks to prep, you know, to, to, get, to get going. Meanwhile, other teams were already training for, some, for a month or two. So, I had to sort of get my players to gel as fast as we can, you know, so and a part of that is the mindset aspect of things, so we had to get that in uh, straight away. And then obviously this has sort of uh, helped us to, to, to structure the team in. So when, it, when we come into some of the games, like, you know, we started a bit slow. So first half, second half, you know, we won't be doing well, especially throughout the knockout stages, but we will be at a good structure. You know, we were at good structure in the group stages. We didn't win majority of the game as uh, first half. So we will find ourselves behind a little bit and, and everything will be a bit slower. That's because we were focused on, on how we can develop our team. We had a, we had a, a good, good shape system in, in place 
and then now as we're leading on to the knockout stages you see now the players are coming out the motivation is there you know they, they, they're understanding the game a lot better so yeah. now people start seeing that we can actually play that beautiful uh, football that we're looking to play you know, listen first 10 minutes what are we doing what are we doing first 15 minutes discipline come on boys just lock it in. Hey, listen, 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 South Sudan has always been the team to be. You know, people who always want to come in and put the pressure on us. So when we come into these tournaments, we expect, because we produce a lot of uh, talented African players to, to go on and, and play professional. So whenever we play this kind of, uh, you know, this kind of games, people already expect us to, to win. But this tournament this year, you know, based on our last year performance, uh, you know, we've been the underdogs, you know, so we, we had to fight away and that's been the, the, the issue throughout. Two, three, South Sudan!
goalkeeper here. Yeah? The last option. We have to eliminate this guy. You can identify now what's happening. Even right now. from here, he press. The moment you go here, he doesn't press, he stop. Yeah? Yes or no? So now what they're doing is they're gonna come in, potentially they're gonna try and roll on us with two. Because I know that they're already doing that a little bit. Yeah, they're gonna try and roll with us with two. Because what they're doing now is they is cheering a little bit. Yeah? So they don't want you to actually get out now. They is cheering up a little bit. So now who's your next out? Composure, man. But the next one has to be so important. The next decision is so important. Start off with the organization wise, I think I think last year's tournament was also a bit rushed because we had two tournaments in the same year. We had the one in January and we had the one in December, so it sort of clashed with the training schedule of the preseason and the club tournaments. But I think this year was good how um, we had we had more of a time to play after the preseason, more than so before the preseason. So it was it was a good timing this year around. So I'm Ajak, uh, Ajak React obviously. People know me as AJ here. Um, I've been playing football for about almost six, seven years now. And um, I started here in, in Perth playing at a Beachborough Eagle Soul Club and I quickly moved up to the higher rankings of MPL. And so I've been playing um, at Inglewood the last season and I'm now going over to Melbourne to play for Bentley Greens, which will be an exciting new journey. Uh, I've been playing for South Sudan I think almost two, three years now. I've probably been in the squad for two years, but I've been around the squad training with the older guys about three, or four, three, three to four years. And it's, it's finally good to cement your positioning, knowing that you know the fans remember you, the fans know you, and they show you love as a player. And I feel like I feel like it's, it's a very welcoming team. The older guys embraced me a lot when I was younger, and they gave me the opportunity to play. So I think my biggest achievement of my football career so far, I would say securing a deal for a big club in Melbourne like Burnley Greens, because I think that's going to give me the platform to go above you no know, secure, go to the A League and eventually pro, pro, get a pro deal. So I've been looking forward to, you know, I've, I've had I've had a few chances to go over there, but obviously with the current coronavirus, it's had been delayed a bit. But now that, you know, it's 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 all it's all set and ready, I'm I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a new challenge, a lot of new things I'll learn living by myself, and you know, it'll be a bit more professional as a footballer, going to a bigger club. I think there's more expectations, you know, there's more training involved, there's more more discipline that I'll need to show, and I think. I think me taking that step is going to help a lot of players here that maybe sometimes feel like they haven't had the chance or they're not getting the chance. I think seeing, seeing a player that comes in the same environment, the same clubs here in Perth, it will hopefully motivate them and get them out to want to achieve their goals and give that extra 20, 10% to get, to get going through their career. Actually with Football Method, which is a program run by Lawrence Schrumer, he's, he's actually helped me out, be my mentor the last few years. I met Lawrence when I was actually injured, I had an MCL injury, but Lawrence got me through that. We did a, a six week, six to eight week program where Lawrence got me fit. And then after that, Lawrence was helping me out with my, mental, like my mindset side of football. Not just obviously my training and physical aspects, but he's also tapped into the, the mental strength that I need to be a pro footballer, which I'm, which I'm hoping to get in there. And so I think you always need that as a young player because sometimes you feel like you're not, you don't know exactly where you're going. Doing things by yourself is not always, is, is not always punctual, but I think 
having someone there like that to motivate you and just, you know, just pick at you every now and then, it just keeps pushing, you know? And then it helps also you be a role model for other people that are coming up. So, uh, so the approach usually, you know, before before the game, like when I come in, it's like trying to find the drive in, in, in each individual players, you know, why they need to go out there and step out there to go play. And majority of this has been, you know, being an African player, you know, you, you know that for sure they need to come and do it for the community, they need to come and do it for themselves, personally, and they got to do it for their, for their national team flags, you know, so usually we try to get the same approach and the question is always, listen, man, if you're playing obviously for the national team, how do you want to be viewed as, you know? take the same approach so you know the, the way I, I usually ask around is individually you know it's on one thing you know a part of it is the way you, you, you try to do one thing is the way you're gonna that, the way you're gonna approach everything in life so uh, so when we enter into the game when we enter into training when we're in the change room that you behave you prep yourself the way you will prep yourself to go and play any big game the way you will prep yourself to go and play for any club so we try to find the motivation for those boys to, to, to take to carry themselves and, and, and come and perform for us, you know. As a coach, I think, I think that's my job. My job is to be able to motivate my players to pump themselves up so then they can go and perform. Because if I can't do that, then you straight away from the start of the game, you, can, you start realizing that your players are not switched on. They need to be locked in, they need to be switched on, they need to be ready for the game. So I approach the sort of the, the mind, mindset aspect, uh, perspective of things, you know, to, to be able to uh, switch on straight away yeah. for the game.
committed no crime and bad mistakes I've made a few I've had my share of fat kicks in my Thank you all, but it's been no bed of roses.